Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Angela Ning. I'm the general manager of IAE Global London office. So IAE Global is a leading provider of the international student recruitment. So today we are presenting find, uh, finding a job in the UK after the pandemic uh, with Euro London appointment. So it's our pleasure to have Mary Ching, the senior consultant, to have uh, some, some of his, her experience in the UK. And also we have two to here, the previous international students in the UK who is now working in Ireland to become our presenters today. So let me kick off from a quick introduction about our company, IA Global. So IA Global started in a single office in Seoul, so South Korea. Over 28 years, IA Global has become one of the leading companies in the world to do the recruitment for the international student. We have a border-based presence in the major students or genetic country from China, India, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Nepal, and also other key markets around the world, as well as we have the destination countries where our partner institutions are located, like US, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. So we are dealing with all the international inquiries, and we also have many years working experience to deal with the international recruitment. That means we know what the international students are really looking for. So here you, we are, we are having some uh, presenters here today to tell you how to find a job in the UK. Here is our London office contact details. So please feel free to contact us after the webinar. If you are outside of UK, we are happy to, to pass you the local office contact details. You can also contact them as well. Now I'm just going to send in the host to Mary. Thank you, IAE, for hosting this event. And I, um, so me, myself, I'm coming from um, a company called, um, recruitment company called Euro London. So we, um, the roles we do here are sort of like more executive search level. Um, and for me, we, um, we obviously coming here to give, um, sort of give, um, you get some advice on how to, I guess, how to find a job in the UK and, um, maybe um some advice on um sort of like where how do you go about looking for a job in the uk um first everyone see the facts um slide yeah so i just gonna assume that's a yes um so, uh, a bit of um, background for myself so i actually um came to the uk study myself as well that was um five years ago and i went to a um, small island called um swansea um in wales and um, so i um started there in master um translation and interpreting and i went back to the um to shanghai started my first um sort of like first three years um recruitment career in michael page um so they are um international uh, recruitment agency as well um, and I was um, more focusing on procurement supply chain um, of um, roles and after three years um, there in Shanghai and I came back in the UK um, and did um, did two years um, in lots of like working with blue chip companies and um, sort of SME startup as well on um, executive search level roles and the roles that we do are sort of like um, from 30k to 100, um, 100k um, range but we um, sort of helping students and also like do some campus recruitment as well so that's I guess that's how we can come to to sort of give you guys some bit of advice as well. Um, but you just need to have really have a think yourself where do you want to go and what types of jobs that you want to go um yeah absolutely with um yeah i can see some of the answers you want to join an international like multi like cultures and you know to understand different uh, different working cultures and um yeah definitely i absolutely i agree I've, um you know other other people are saying um yeah as 
as I guess like with global company, you can learn a lot from um, different different people as well. People are all are on different levels, no matter like entry level. You guys probably very active on job searching. How important do you, when you're doing all the job application forms, how important do you think a cover letter would be? Um, does anyone think cover letter is important or not important? For experience, if you worked in, in the industry for more than one or two years, then that, that's not absolutely 100% necessary. But if you are coming fresh and looking for a job now, I think a cover a good cover letter does um, does help as well. And also try to make your CV um, short and straight to the point as well. Like bullet will help and, you know, avoid all... Um, avoid um, like a lot of um, word, words and maybe give some evidence, give some achievements on your CV and, and that would actually help as well. And also um, just uh, there's a lot of um, tests online that you can Google to, to have practice your skills as well just before the interviews and also tailor your interview preparations for the, um, for different roles and you know, try to understand what the company does and uh, try to understand the company's background, the culture before you go into the interview. You know, remember to get feedbacks and work on the, the, your weakness. And, you know, you, I think that's all the tips that you can, which would lead you to have um, your dream job. And the next, um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, just... Mary, I got a question. Uh, somebody personal message me asking for the covering letter. So as you yeah. said, the covering letter may not be very essential for the for anybody who has the experience before, but for the fresh graduate students, what yeah. kind of things do you recommend them to put in the covering letter? Uh, in cover letter, I think that's like I said, it's very important you tailor that towards to the role that you you apply. So basically, if you I'm giving example, if you apply, apply for a data analyst role, or if you apply for um IT technical or developer or language developer, you you, you you try to. I know you guys probably haven't got that experience in the past, but try to make anything relevant. Say like, oh, I have done this in my spare time like I've taken the interest off this network engineer um, program I developed this and maybe do a portfolio yourself and that's so online you can maybe learn from some online courses and do um, um, you know make a, yourself make a, your own portfolio that you can share with um, with the documents as well and obviously I think the most important is is that you tailor that towards the road and the company once you've done your research on the company that um so relate yourself to the company so if they i'm just giving you example saying if they if they are starbucks and you can just say like you know how uh, relate yourself stay on a professional level but just say like uh, how well the fact that you some little facts that you may know about starbucks well other people might not know and that little things that they might pick up and they might think oh I'll, i might give you know the 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 recruiter behind that that might be think oh i might give this person a chance because they you know it's the the there they sent something on the that cover letter so i think that's that's definitely important for for someone's like fresh thank you very much yep and the next les i'm going to talk about um is um the the basically the 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 roles that we cover at euro london or like just in general give you guys a sort of idea on the roles that you could maybe get into after you study you know i i studied in translation and interpreting i never know i would end up in in, in a recruiter obviously like in headhunt hunter so um i guess uh, keep your options open um that's that's i think that's the main idea i guess you interview different roles and you have a, a idea of different companies culture and that's all good for, for yourself um, and obviously um you can there's so many directions you can go so in customer service or like it like it sales sales marketing in marketing you can obviously go deep, go deeper into paper click or se um so seo sort of type of roles and you can you know you, you start from 
to all sort of like Google marketing, like keywords, search engine, all different sort of roles. Then you can work for um, big marketing agencies as well that you, and then that would give you more um, sort of client facing. You work different types of clients as well that in consumer or in automotive um, or even in uh, manufacturing or um, is that that could maybe give you more more bit more broad idea and also the next one would be um, sort of executive assistant business support customer service and that sort of rose would be quite popular as well and also um, you know I know loads you guys probably speak more than one languages and um, so maybe you can get into translation as well and that maybe you know proofreading interpreting that sort of job as well obviously obviously and uh, uh, and the last you can you know it's probably a bit further down further down when you I guess get into one area and then when you work in that area for five years you can maybe get get into the senior sort of executive level sort of um, roles as well that's that's I think that's very important when you finish your uni when you get into a, a role for for two or three years and you really need to think okay I've done this now this is my achievement and what's um you know what's next what's my um I would say always have a plan you know always have obviously you have a to-do list for every day and priority prioritize your tasks and that's just like you'll have a two three you know as you like five-year plan that where do you want to be what do you want to achieve and you know what's your passion and I think that's most important that's more important as well to have a drive behind you and to you know motivate yourself constantly it's, um, and we also you know as you're London my company they also have offices in uh, different areas in Europe Paris and obviously um, Frankfurt and uh, Munich as well Yep, so if anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, next slide, this is just the types of, com um, types of companies I, um, we, um, as your London, we work um, with, and also um, most of the companies sponsor visa. And we, if you have any question on visas, please do free, feel free to ask um, Angela and they are the expert on that. Um, so we, I guess, obviously with the, the new um, policy on the student visa, you get two, I think two years on. Yes, TSW visa for two years after the graduation with a UK degree. If somebody graduated with the PhD degree, they can have three years instead. Yes. So yep if you have any um, questions on visas you can feel free to ask Angela and I'm sure they um, got that well covered but most of the clients that we work with they do sponsor visas and I think if you really want to start your career and really want to you know get into that professional life in the UK like I think you just keep trying and um, you know I think there's the door to open to to every everyone yep, thank you Mary me. I think we got one question in the chat box I'm not sure yeah. have you replied this one. So mm -hmm. how can we achieve our dream job in multinational companies is easily just by improving my qualities and working in my flow despite huge comp competitions out there. So basically, um, I think they, there are lots of competitors if they want to do a gym job. Do you have any suggestions for that? Um, there is a lot of competitions. I mean, um, you know, with obviously with um, current situation, the Brexit and um, the, the COVID, it is difficult for this year's graduate. Um, I absolutely understand that, you know, there's so many, because uh, like, for me, if I post a job up there, I can get 20, 30 CVs in one hour. Uh, it is a lot of, I have to like let you guys know, it's very competitive up there. When I receive a CV, the first thing I would say, like, are they recent graduate, what their grade is, you know, is it two, is it one, is it, do they have first, do they have one two one or one two or do they have the third and I think that's very important but um and also obviously if you get um get to the interview you really have to shine yourself to to get get that job this who studied international education um like that major is in international education and what 
can they find a job in the UK? And my answer is absolutely, absolutely. You can find a job. Anyone can find a job as long as you guess you got the right skills and you got the right motive and you got the right attitudes and you know where to go. And I think for this type of question, you just need to know yourself that that you what kind of jobs that you you're looking for. You there's so many um, jobs out there for for educational students that you can get into maybe um just giving um i guess i'm just um thinking in my head that you can get into universities there's lots of universities looking for like entry level um sort of um if you i think if you 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 can apply through the university's um website or you can even i think there's better ways that you if you graduate from that uni then you definitely have a better chance that you can make yourself stand up as well or you uh, or you, there's a quicker way that if you know someone in the in working at university where you want to get into you can you know maybe ask them to to help you ask around and send like maybe like forward your CV as well there's so many ways that you can go about it um and it's I guess is it difficult yeah it is difficult the market is competitive but i guess you just need to work on your skills and you know um try to get all the like all your i guess other opportunities to i guess to to speak to other people to understand the, how the market going and how to you know get the the dream job and that you you know the job is that is right for you and that is where you want to go for the next two years the i guess for international students here in the uk there's um i guess you either go for a master in art which is sort of like more um master art is more like you know you study language or you study education or uh, you study um um that's like master in art or you have a master in engineer that science and science and engineer that's more um and that's more sort of, sort of mathematic and that 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 kind of master or someone um you know there's other students that, that like this doing this niche uh, niche degrees and study sort of like um voice or study like i know and i've heard people doing like uh, therapists and also I've heard people learn the studying like sociologists and it's more like niche for them to find the job but it's definitely I think there are chances to 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 find the job in theatre but I guess it's just that you have to start from the bottom to 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 get an entry level road and work towards I guess work on the um then work your way up I think it's just the first I know the first step is very, always difficult to get into that that area but you just need to keep trying keep trying and when when you get in then you know I, I believe that you know when you know that when you build up your network in that area then you you definitely like it will expand your 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 way from there Thank you, Mary. I think we have got a lot of questions about how to find a job, how to get a job as an international student. So um, shall we ask him Tutu for her experience? Because Tutu used to be an international student here, and now she's find a job, luckily find a job in Ireland. And so let's see what Tutu's experience. All right, okay. So, uh, I, I hope everyone can uh, hear me and see me okay. Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, my name is Tutu, uh, originally from Thailand. So I am going to uh, tell you a bit about myself and give you a little bit about uh, my stories and uh, a bit of a mindset and moral support, So, which I think is very important. I think Mary uh, has covered a lot of uh, technical uh, issues and, and technical stuff already. So uh, we will get into some of uh, the stories and the struggle behind finding a job and how competitive the market is. So uh, first of all, I grew up in Thailand, born and bred in Thailand. And then I did my bachelor in Thailand in political science. So as you know, political science, you did politics, you did international relations. And then I continued to study my master's at King's College London, uh, doing political economy and specialized in the Middle East. 
So back then, that was 2013. So back in 2013, I have no interest in getting a job in London at all. You know, maybe at different time of like you want different thing and back then I'm really into working for international government in international development area so I went back home I spent a while working for international organizations back home in Thailand and then in 2017 I decided I want to move to the UK and that was I wouldn't call it a mistake but it would be easier if you are a tier four student and you are currently a student now to get a job and change from tier four visa into tier two visa. It could be the case that you went back home and then you work for a company you really want to, and they do international transfer and send you to the UK. It could be any case, but there you have to remember this, that there are so many paths. There are so many ways to come here. Like uh, Angela has, has already said, I am currently in Ireland, in Dublin, working for Accenture in tech support. That's so irrelevant to what I used to do. But in my current job, it requires Thai language. It's, it requires language skills. And I was thinking, okay, what are the skills I have had? So I was working in international organizations. I was doing a lot of project management skills. I was doing a lot of uh, process and change management. So all those skills, it's called transferable skills. And that's are very important. And you don't have to, you know, when you apply for jobs, I understand there are so many jobs require you to have two years experience, five year experience. Sometimes you just have to go and try. And I really strongly supported everyone. When, if you have just started your study or you have just grad, graduated, try to do something. You can do something from your university. You can apply for internship. You can apply for traineeship. I, I understand that sometimes maybe before you study master's, you already have a few years of experiences and you don't want to get unpaid or you don't want to get internship. But internship sometimes paid. Internships sometimes lead you to have a connection or a group of network. Because there's what, one thing for sure that internship or any type of experiences, you can write it down your CV and that's counts as international experience. But again, it depends on what you want on the area of your studies. I understand that some people, when you were studying back home, you study one thing and then you move to the UK to study and then you study another thing. Maybe your past experience is irrelevant to what you're going to do. So always, always learn. That was my first or number one tips. Always learn something. I understand people may think, oh, but you're art students. You study politics. You study political economy. How do you come across this job? I know that after the pandemic and during the pandemic as well, all the tech companies are kind of, uh, the hiring process is a bit in search. A lot of uh, jobs at company like TikTok have been so many positions open. And that was just one name, but then as you know, I mean, if you're in marketing or you in tech support, you're in engineering, you, uh, you want to work on data analyst, there are a lot of agencies who work with these tech companies and there are some of the options for you as well. So one thing you may think, okay, most of the jobs are accountant or engineering, or you can take a look at the shortage, the occupational shortage list. And maybe it could be like uh, science related. It is the shortage list that's, of course, for, for sure, it could be easier or maybe they are in high demand, but it doesn't mean that whatever you study or whatever you want to do, you will not get it. You still can get it. It's possible and it's achievable. So, so why? So you said, yeah, but it's possible, it's achievable. So why are you in Ireland? So think back in 2017, because I did international organizations. I did a lot of NGOs organizations before. So my aim back then was just, okay, I want to work for British NGOs. I want to work for British international development uh, consultant companies. I was applied for a hundred and hundred of jobs. I got rejected. 
I mean, the market, like Mary said, the market is very competitive. You have to get used to the rejection. Go and fail and try. and Go and fail and try harder. Just see what you are missing. Try to get feedback as much as possible. I remember after 50 jobs I applied, I got to call one of the recruiter and the recruiter be honest with me. Okay, Tutu, you know what? You're applying to the NGOs area. London is an NGO hub. It's almost impossible because there are loads and loads of competitors who have many, many years of experiences. But okay, that's why I was like, okay, so what can I do? What can I learn? So I received my feedback. I try to improve. And then I talked to a friend who worked for Accenture back home in Thailand. And she talks about how Accenture is a one of the leading tech companies and do a lot of operations work, uh, dealing a lot with a lot of clients like Facebook, Google, or Microsoft even. And then I started to look for all other options. I mean, back then for me in 2017, it has to be NGO, it has to be London, but then maybe what I needed back then is just, okay, first I need to keep going and I need to open my options. Location-wise, right now, I don't regret moving to Ireland because, I mean, it's one hour, 50 minutes, one hour flight to London. You can find a job, not just in London, you can find a job at all the places. And now, during my process, I think, okay, the proximity is okay. It's closer to London. I have a lot of friends in London. You know, you want to work in London, so now you work in Dublin. That's okay. They do sponsorship here for me. So I was like, okay, that's a good opportunity. And then during the process of moving here, I found out that, okay, if you live here for five years, you can get an Irish citizenship. And once you get Irish citizenship, Ireland and the UK, uh, Ireland is the only country in the European Union that have a special agreement with the UK that as Irish nationals, you can still go and work in the UK. So for me, maybe people can get a shortcut and get a job in London right away or in the UK right away. But for me, maybe this is my path that, okay, I need to come here, gain my experience here in Ireland. Maybe in five years, I can be a citizen and then I can move to the UK later. So don't limit your options. Try to broaden your options. Okay, maybe you want to work for a tech company, but okay, you need to study Python, you need to study uh, SQL, there are a lot of skills. Try to look at the job description to see what skills they require. See what you are missing and try to learn. It's not about your degree. It's not always about your degree. Sometimes it's, it is, but it's not always about your degree. So if you are, I, I know, a friend who are working as an accountant in London right now, she is Thai. Uh, she went back home to Thailand and then she got a job in Singapore first. So once she got a job in Singapore, it's easier for her to come back to the UK. I also have another friend who is an accountant in Guernsey, the Channel Island, because it's also a shortage in, in the shortage list as well. I know so many people who are an architect who was working in, in London and got sponsored. So it depends on what you're interested in, your area, what career, the company. It could be that you, ha you think that, okay, you want this company, but you are still lack of experiences. Maybe you need to look for another tier of company, try, gain more experiences and become a manager or a higher position and the company you want. So don't limit your, your skills and your mindset or your capacity and your capabilities. You can do it, but I know that you will need to get used to a lot of no's, a lot of rejections email. You have to be so patient while waiting for that email to come true. Once you have applied, why don't they come back to me? And I always uh, think that, okay, update your LinkedIn, update your CV, but don't rely on just 
easy apply on LinkedIn because I, I was there before. Okay. I look at LinkedIn as a supply, apply, apply. Try to, like Mary said, try to look at the company's website. Maybe there's another link, maybe there's direct link, or you can get more information about their missions, about their values, because at the end of the day, that's going to be so important during your interview. So I have, I have talked about alignment, what you want and what you can achieve right now towards your goal. I think one of the first few questions you have to ask yourself is that what do you want out of the job that you are applying in the UK? What do you plan to achieve by working in the UK? And what is your goal? How is this path it's going to lead to your goal? Maybe it doesn't have to be one direct path. It could be another, like myself, it could be a long road just to, to get there. But at the very end, it's just about the journey and the experience that have, you will have. But if it's leading to your goal, then I, I, I guess it will work for everybody. So I want to touch base a little bit on your uh, university. So everyone may know every university has their own career service. So I would strongly, strongly recommend for you to take a look at your university websites or your department or your uh, course just to see what are the type of services sometimes uh, you can contact your agency, you can contact IAE just for this forum or uh, this, this type of session. You can contact your university as well if, okay, you want to develop your CV, you want to develop your cover letter, or you are still lost, you don't know what to do, how do I start? Reach out to them. Some university, I know for sure, that they offer one-to-one -one career service. I think it's a really, really good start. I understand that, okay, yeah, you, some people say, yeah, I'd rather spend time doing all the things, develop CV or learn new skills. It's how you prioritize your time really, because I mean, there's so many mentor program, coaching program for free as well, that uh, some alumni of your university or UK alumni offer mentorship or coaching sessions on how to achieve uh, the career you want. So I also think that besides the career service, on LinkedIn, it's so many connections in there. I know a lot of people who went to my university uh, send me a message on LinkedIn because they said, okay, yeah, I went to the same university as you. I can see that you are working abroad right now. Can I contact you for more details? Can I uh, have a quick half an hour with you? At first, I'm not very used to this as well, because for me, I'm like, okay, I know people and maybe a friend of friend know people. I ask them, okay, can you introduce us? But I never actually just ping a stranger and ask them for a cup of coffee or for half an hour. But I remember back then in 2017, when I was looking for a job, there are a lot of the people who want to work for international organizations I work with, and they ping me on LinkedIn and ask me about questions, how do they prepare? So don't be afraid. I mean, the worst case is they saying no, but it doesn't mean that you can't, because you come with a good intention, especially if, you, if they're alumni, if they study the same course as you, May, they may have experienced what you are currently experiencing. So don't be afraid. And sometimes the company you work with, they sometimes uh, post uh, on LinkedIn as well or, or some other platforms that, okay, yeah, feel free to, to have a chat with me if you're interested in this role. I mean, reach out to people. I know that in the US, this is pretty common. I know so many friends who want to study masters or grad school in the US. They just reach out to alumni just to ask about the, uh, the process of the applications process and everything like that. In the UK, I think you've got a little bit more resources. You've got that as an option. And you've got the agency, you've got IAE as, a, as an option as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, 
alumni and connections. I also mentioned about internship, about gaining experiences, about any type of projects. Referral is part of the connection. If you happen to know someone who works for the company you want to apply, reach out to them, try to reach out to them. If it's a second connection, third connection, a friend of friend, uh, Mary touched on this as well about referral. A lot of companies, I think globally, it's not just in the UK, globally, uh, to get your CV noticed, sometimes it takes referral. Why? Because I mean, for that position, sometimes I, I used to think this way, if they can't sponsor you, they can't sponsor anyone, right? So how do they, how would you be, be outstanding from uh, the whole hundreds and hundreds of applications? Sometimes they just consider referral first because they know that they used to say, great people, no great people. So sometimes they consider that because even just with the referral, they already have so many good candidates that they can pick from. It's not always the case. I'm not saying that, oh, I don't have referral, I won't apply. I don't have referral when I first apply because my friend is working for Essential back home, not in Ireland, so they can't refer me. Try anyway, but if you have a referral, first you get a little bit of an insight because sometimes they put, uh, the title for this job, okay, consultant, but it's actually very, very high level. It's not always like, okay, you are a specialist and then you become a lead and then you become manager. Not always like that. At different company, they have different tier system internally. So you sometimes reading by the job title or the job description doesn't always say the level and how high the level would be or how experienced the candidates would be. So you will get an insight out of that job. You will get to know, okay, what level does the experience match? Or maybe you get to know the team a little bit better or you get to know uh, the culture of the company a little bit better just to see if you will suit or you will fit in that company. So that's another good thing just, just to know that Okay, I, I remember there was one time when I already moved to Ireland, I was thinking, okay, yeah, I want to consider uh, changing to, to another job. So what I did is I just, uh, I found this guy who works for this company that I want to apply. I ping him on LinkedIn and see, hey, I am looking for this position. Uh, can you just give me some more details about this position, if that's okay? And then we keep on talking and I just, straight ask him like, okay, do you feel comfortable re referring me for this position that I wanted to apply? Uh, I have this, 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 this experience. I mean, you have to sell yourself a little bit because it's like you are talking to a recruiter. So you have to show yourself, don't be afraid that, oh yeah, you're going to be flexing about your skills or anything. Be yourself, be authentic, but then show, what, show them what you've got because they only, they only have limited time with you. So you have to wrap, wrap all your highlight, all your shipments, your awards, your skills, your experience in a very five to 10 minutes, or maybe it's just a short paragraph. So try to learn about yourself. No one develop one CV and then that's it. So many people develop their CVs 10, 20 times just to make sure that, okay, the CV match the job that they are going to apply and the CV really, really represents their values and highlights their achievement. Yeah, and one of the things that I want to mention is bring your confidence to the floor. Be yourself, but show, be, I mean, have your self-esteem. Be yourself, be authentic but try to show your values. I always think during the interview that, okay, you may want this job so much, but you got something to offer to them. Always think you got something to offer to them and you are willing to learn to contribute to the job. I think contribution is one of the key things and always be prepared. The more you know about the company, your role, or you have relevant experiences, 
that's the, the, the more the better. Sometimes, okay, they require certain skills, certain programming, and you never study about it before, but you show them that you try to get the certificate, you are in the process, that's already something. It's, it's already something, it's always better than nothing. So be yourself and learn, keep learning, learn new skills. So yeah, another thing uh, before uh, I go, it says, don't compare yourself. Uh, like I said, a lot of people studied, finish, they have a job waiting for them. Yeah, but it's not everyone. I think everyone have their own journey, have their own struggle, and they experience differently. Maybe you are need to be patient a little bit more just to get the job you really want or you really need for the time being just to get the job you really, really want. So don't compare yourself, oh, why do they get this job? I know that sometimes people consider it a luck, but I would say you got to keep learning and it's all about the timing as well. People may apply first, but they might get noticed because there are loads and loads of applications. Like I said, the latest one, maybe they put some keywords in the CV and they get noticed. So don't compare yourself. I mean, you can hear my story. You can hear other people's stories just to inspire you, to motivate you, not to be like, oh my God, why does she get this? Why do they get that? I think the most important thing and the, the right mindset is the most important thing. And I think during job hunting and job searching is exhausting. I know like you can... You can be at home looking for a job and get naked. So it's okay. I mean, you can get rest, try to think, rethink about your values, about what you really want, what you actually want to achieve, your goal, everything. Write down in a paper. When you apply, maybe you get it. You got to the interview. Maybe you got to the final. That's great. If you got the job, that's brilliant. If you don't, try to get as much feedback as possible. If you need a rest, rest. You don't have to apply for the job every single day. Get some rest. Revisit your paper and the notes just to remind yourself what you really, really want. And then fight again. Try again. Try harder. So, yes. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's my story. So, I will go to the questions now. Okay. Thank you so, very much, Tuchu. I think that we yeah. got one question here. Mm -hmm. Do you think students need to contact with agency help helps to find a job find a job? So for me, what I meant is uh, recu your recruitment agency even uh, your student recruitment agency like A I A E. So if you have your agency that have uh, that sent you to study, maybe like for example, Angela got some connections that okay maybe they can link you to talk to other people and also i mean do i recommend it i i don't think it's necessary i do know that some agencies like recruitment agency that say okay if you want to apply for internship and get tier five visa you can apply with them but it's going to cost you a lot of money i understand that uh i wouldn't say that it's necessary you can take a look at all details but just to clarify that the agency what i meant by agency is that this type of connection uh like iae got uh, a connection with uh these people and that people who are working in the uk right now you can get back and ask as well and also with uh tier five i do know that uh especially if you just study or you are studying uh i Sometimes when you do your part-time job and you did it really well, you can actually talk to your manager and just to ask, okay, if it's possible for tier five visas or tier two visas, don't be afraid to ask as well. So because I know that a lot of agency that said, okay, apply with them, they will get you internship, they will get you tier five, but they never said that they are guarantee a hundred percent that you will get a job in the UK or even tier two visa that they will get a job. I mean, there could be a high chance 
uh, I, I wouldn't say that you go for it. It could be an alternative if, if, if you want, of course. Uh, but just try with your experience and get that experience of, of trying by yourself first, I, I would say. Thank you. Actually, in the UK, we have some updated for the visa. There's no yeah. more tier two visa, no more tier yeah. five visa. They have all changed. Yeah. So basically, I think there's a question here, which is asking, are we allowed to start up our own small business after mm -hmm. the completion of the, our study? So okay. that's something related to the visa. We do have some visa called startup visa. Yeah. And also there's another one is called the uh, in, um, innovator visa. So, well, if you are interested to know how to get a visa to find a job, I mean, job related work visa, we might have another section to have this kind of information to update you. But today is, I think it's mainly about how to find a job. And uh, we do have a lot of inquiries to how to find a job in the UK. So that's why we have Mary, we have Tutu to have that experience to share with us about how to find a job in the UK and also Ireland as well. As, uh, as Tutu just mentioned, maybe um, if you can find another a job in Ireland, it will be a pass to come into the UK in a later stage. But just, just be preparing yourself, just be um, learning whatever you can learn. And also when the luck is come and you will be ready to get the job successfully. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think there's one more here. How do we develop contacts with people who might be an access to our job findings? Well, <laughs> any idea about that too? too? Uh, yes, and if Mary, if, if you have anything to add, please uh, on, on these questions as well. So I, I would say, don't try to think that uh, oh my God, I'm going to look at this person because they're going to be an asset for you or there will be an advantage for, for your interview. Uh, I think, don't, don't try to think that way. The, the way I look at it is just to make connection. Like I say, great people, no great people. Sometimes this person, know the person who can lead you to the job you want. You never know. It's, it's like when you're making networking or you're going to a networking event or you're making connections, it's not always that, okay, she works for this company. Maybe she works for that company, but she's so busy because there's 10 people trying to get to her. But maybe you get to the, the person who's standing alone, but that girl is the best friend of that girl. And she can just cut through the whole 10 people and get to her right away so you never actually know just try to see okay if she works at that company great uh does she post anything that she's doing a lot of pro bono uh projects that give or advice give advice to people who are uh, studying or people who are looking for a job for that company that could be it as well and also uh you you can ping her you you can message her and, and see how they respond uh, if they said okay yeah i'm sorry i'm really busy right now it doesn't mean that oh they don't want to talk with you maybe they are really busy right now they could be like their peak period or something and then you can move on to another person but i would say try to find something in common the company that you want to work for or uh, your study your course or maybe it could be that okay you're coming from the same country or you went to the same university same degree or you know the person who know the person so try to find people who have a few things in common first and, and start from there yeah thank you i think considering about the time is nearly uh, one hour already so i just want to pick up the final questions here and somebody asking can the university you study in be a factor in getting a job so i'm not sure about Chuchu. what do you think about this question uh i think it's not at the ranking the university uh is it a factor if you call it a factor no of course it's not but what you can what your university can offer that, okay, maybe you are uh, just about to pick your, your university and just to see which one is better. I think 
it's depends on so many fa factors. Like the way I pick my university, I don't think that oh, it's going to impact my job hunting, finding a uh, jobs in the UK or abroad after. I try to look at so many factors that okay, uh, how university can help or how the department can help. But does it matter? Not really. But what your your university can give you, okay, of course, beside the education and the course and the, uh, and the, and your friends and the connections that you gain is uh, the career service that I have mentioned. And also, it could be something in common that you can relate to a lot of people. I know that in Thailand back home. That we have a big group of Thai people who graduated from the UK. Actually, how I become uh, to 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 know Daisy, the, who who are doing uh, marketing for IAE, is that okay? Is a Thai people who went to study in the UK. So it's not always uh, the university. I think just to compare with a lot of people globally, because remember when you apply a job in the UK you are competing i mean before it was a lot of european people right now maybe it become more competitive because of of them as well but some sometimes i think just studying in the uk and applying for a job in the uk is already uh something more useful than getting a uh, a degree elsewhere or say in Germany or in the Netherlands and try to get a job in the UK because I know that during the visa process or when you apply for visas they're going to ask you okay have you done your masters or you have your IELTS sometimes if you've done your masters then it, it could be easier during the process in terms of documentations but I, I don't think the ranking or the name of university has something to do with with getting a job it's all about the skills and it's all about you yeah agree agree with you thank you Tutu. so thank you very much today and thank you everyone to join the webinar today thank you Tutu. thank you mary and i think that's the end of our webinar today i will send you guys the presentation uh, the webinar record a little bit later thank you mm -hmm. Thank you, Thanks thank you, Angela. Playing. Thank you for arranging. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.